I'm just gonna wait a couple seconds and then we will get started. I am a little bit sick, um, lost my voice about three days ago and uh, it's coming back but um, it's still really sore so I do have, did you guys see that? <laughs> it's been a really long day, We. <laughs> I have a drink, we got back from our trip Saturday night really late and there was no sleep involved that night. And then today, uh, yesterday was my son's birthday, and then today is um, everything day. So I'm tired. So don't don't mind me. Um, okay, we're talking about inflammation today, and um, I'm on my floor because everywhere else in my house is a disaster with laundry and everything else. Um, I have this now wet <laughs> diagram. Really a sexy person right here. He is going to be helping me explain something about inflammation. Um, the first thing I want to start talking about is what is inflammation. You guys, if you've been following me for long enough, you know what it is. Um, inflammation is the response of your immune system to something negative in the body. Excuse me. So normally, um, if you get, say, a cold or a flu or, um, you know, you cut your leg or something like that, your immune system will create inflammation to heal that area or um, kill the virus. <coughs> Excuse me. So inflammation on its own is a good thing. If we didn't have inflammation, you wouldn't be able to heal from wounds. You wouldn't be able to fight infection, etc. So the problem is when inflammation becomes chronic, um, when there is too much inflammation in the body, that the body starts to fall apart. Uh, and I'm going to use, the, use this diagram to explain how that actually happens. Um, you're not born with chronic inflammation. I mean, sometimes you can be, um, but depending on your genetics and a bunch of factors, but you're not always born with you know, chronic inflammation. It happens over the years and it happens for a reason. Um, and in my opinion, the root cause of every disease is too much inflammation in the body. When you think about, before I, we go into the diagram, when you think about, like just really think about our worlds, you'll be almost disgusted by how much poison we are exposed to, you know, ingesting and coming in contact with. Think about how many people are smoking, you know, toxic cigarettes or vaping toxic, you know, chemicals and things like that. Think about how much pollution there is, how much plastic we're drinking and eating out of, how much heavy metals we're in contact with, how heavily our food supply is sprayed and then above all <clears throat> we are you know all pumping ourselves with drugs which pharmaceuticals have their time and place but people overuse them and it's not necessarily the doctor's fault I personally wouldn't like when I've gone to the emergency room a few times people have a little cut on their finger and are wanting you know drugs for it um, or medications for it people just like the idea of them and they push their doctors and so in order for their doctors to just get to the next patient they just prescribe um, people overuse you know Tylenol and Advil and things like that and then above and beyond we have so much fast food. It's on every corner. It's so much easier to find junky food than it is to find healthy food. So when you think about all this, it only makes sense that we are we have so much inflammation in the body. And this is where my diagram is going to come in handy. So don't mind the water droplets that you know happened in the beginning. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Let's try doing it like this. Okay. So my legs are going to be the stand. <laughs> this is a human body right here, and when you, you know, get sick or um, say, we'll start with a leg. Say you cut your leg right here. You fall, scrape your leg. You're now this, just picture that this is red. Your immune system comes, sends antibodies and whatever else it needs and killer cells and all that to this area to heal that wound. Okay. So it sends a surge of blood also. That's, that's inflammation. Inflammation is created to target and heal that spot. Say you also went and had a burger, which is full of you know, major toxic chemicals. Now, your immune system comes in contact with a lot of poisons and toxins that it does not recognize. So it rushes to your colon to create inflammation, to neutralize the invader. The problem with food, the one thing that I actually forgot to mention, if you, you know, say you get herpes virus or 
even AIDS or any, any other virus or bacteria, your immune system can kill it. It's, it's something that's living that can be killed. So if your immune system creates inflammation and targets and attacks that virus, it, it can die off and then it's gone. The problem with food is that your immune system can't kill it, but it doesn't know that. It sees, say, uh, you know, glyphosate or it sees, um, you know, MSG or some sort of toxic aspartame, something toxic in the food. It knows it's not good and it, it knows it doesn't belong in the body, but it, it can't kill it. So it's going to keep creating inflammation and more inflammation and more inflammation and more inflammation. You guys get the picture um, until it's gone. And food will stay in the body for up to six weeks. It sticks to the colon walls, it enters the bloodstream and it recirculates. And so these toxic uh, ingredients that you put into your body don't just get killed off by inflammation like a virus would or a bacteria. It actually stays much longer and your immune system just doesn't know why it's not dying off. So it keeps putting more inflammation. So say you have a burger today, you'll have inflammation from that burger. If it's a toxic burger, um, you'll have inflammation from that burger for probably about six weeks. So for six weeks, your immune system is occupied here, creating inflammation. And then say um, you go and, I don't know, take some medication, some sort of drug for something, or you smoke. Let's say you smoke a cigarette or, or some marijuana or something like that. You know, get some inflammation here. So your immune system is going to say, oh, there is, you know, some smoke inhalation. There's toxins here. We don't know what it is. Let's go, let's go get rid of it. So now you've got inflammation here. And then say you're chopping some apples and you slice a finger. And now your immune system has to go here and create inflammation to heal that. And you go and then eat another burger. Now there's more inflammation here. So your immune system's here creating inflammation. I hope you guys are getting the picture. If you're confused still, give me a th um, just let me know. But if you get it, give me a thumbs up. And so the idea is that now you go and eat, a, a drink a ton of soda. So it's very acidic and now you start getting arthritic pains and decalcification of your joints. Now your knees are hurting and your immune system has to rush and uh, create inflammation there to try to, you know, balance that out. And so now you have all these little cuts and inflammation everywhere, all over the body that's causing your immune system to be chronically inflamed. So when your body looks like this, and for most people it's even more than that, most people will have diabetes. Hold on. This is very uncomfortable. <laughs> the things I do. Okay. So most people will have diabetes or liver disease, so their liver is inflamed, or they'll have renal disease, so their kidneys are inflamed, or their adrenals. Um, some people will have lack of iodine, and so they have and, and lots of heavy metals that are going to their thyroid, so now their thyroid has inflammation. Some people will have um, mercury amalgams and uh, infection. If you have a tooth infection, that occupies your immune system, so inflammation right here. And so when you have this beautiful drawing, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. When you have this happening in your body, we don't think about, you know, when we have a cut or a tooth infection or a cavity or a scrape, sorry, neighbors have their ATVs out. Um, we don't think about that as inflammation, but it is. And so when this is happening and your body is like putting out little fires literally everywhere, that's chronic inflammation. And that's when it becomes a problem because now your, your body's actually getting damaged. When you have too much inflammation, you have, um, you, your body gets uh, too heated and everything kind of becomes um, inflamed, but it also becomes really acidic and your adrenals, every time inflammation is, is being produced, your adrenals have to create cortisol. So now your body is extremely stressed, even though you might not physically feel stressed, you might be like, oh, I'm, I'm relaxed. I feel great but your body physically is stressed, there's too much cortisol or not enough cortisol when your adrenals are fatigued. And um, then everything starts to shut down. So your immune system can't keep up this 24 seven. There's no way it's gonna do this 24 seven for years and years and years. So what starts to happen is your immune system becomes really dysfunctional and um, it becomes unable to, to function correctly. So think about yourself if you were, um, you know, working on a job and you never your, your shift never ended you never got to come home and sleep or eat or relax it was just work 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 on that job site for you know 24 hours seven days a week times 10 years 20 years 30 years you'd be dead you would just not be able to function you would be so dysfunctional you'd be just all over the place and that's what happens to your immune system when it gets to the point where it's putting out little fires all over the body without ever getting to rest without ever getting to rest now your body's opened up to viruses, 
you know, dangerous viruses and bacteria and parasites and yeast and all sorts of invaders that should not be thriving in the body, but your immune system is like, you know what? I have too many fires to put out. I cannot possibly put out another fire. And so it doesn't. It allows the viruses and the candida and parasites to, to live there because it physically can't do anything else. And now you're overrun with toxic viruses or, or parasites and candida and that the toxins that those viruses and candida and parasites are secreting, that's even more inflammation that your immune system has to deal with and put out another fire. So um, you start to shut down, your body becomes overrun with toxic you know, substances, both living and dead. So viruses, candida, parasites, and also non-living things like uh, toxic food. And your cells eventually, when there is not enough because inflammation is good, so remember that. So if, so say you, you cut your finger again and you need a, a bunch of cells to come and rebuild themselves here. That's from inflammation. And when there's not enough inflammation to go around, when there's not enough of your immune system to go and heal what it needs to heal, how is your, your gut lining supposed to rebuild itself? How is your um, hair supposed to grow? How is anything in your body supposed to happen when there's not enough resources and not enough help from the immune system to do so? So you start to shut down and that's where disease comes in. I know what I, the, why I want to share this video and I know I've made a lot of videos, <coughs> excuse me, I know I've made a lot of videos already on inflammation, but it's a huge topic because everything that you experience as far as disease goes and your symptoms is because of inflammation in the body. And so with this information, you need to think about what areas in your life are creating more inflammation in your body. For most people, if you're just starting out on your health journey, the best thing is gonna do you can do is to cut out things from your diet that are not so great. Um, if you're more progressed in your journey and you've already cut out, you know, your gluten and dairy, sugar, your, your canola oils, your really inflammatory foods, you might still be eating processed foods. So, I I do this myself. So I eat a lot of because I'm always busy and running around with clients and stuff. I um, find myself grabbing granola bars, even though they're they're so clean and the ingredients are amazing. They're still processed and I will grab granola bars and I will grab like pre-packaged or processed, you know, gluten-free pretzels, even though the ingredients are with cauliflower and really clean, they're still processed and processed food does still cause inflammation because it's not in the form. Um, <coughs> I'm choking, sorry. Just give me a sec. Um, <coughs> look at the diagram. <laughs> so processed food is, um, really inflammatory because it's not in the form that your body is recognizing. Okay, hold on. <coughs> okay, just needed to collect myself there. Sorry, guys. I'm too sick to be doing this, but it's the only time I had. <coughs> There's like a a big tickle in my throat. Okay. So um, you might want to look at cutting out <coughs> some of that process stuff. Um, if you're at the point where you've cut all that out and you're still wanting to reduce more triggers for your immune system, that's where deep breathing comes in and managing your stress and, <coughs> and making sure that... Um, <coughs> Making sure, good thing I brought water because I'm literally dying here. Sorry, guys. Okay, making sure that um, you have, you know, your 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 toxic cleaning products are out of the house, and you're get if you're a woman, you're using natural feminine hygiene products and natural makeup and things like that. So when you're getting sick, <laughs> when you get sick, it's because your immune system is is really weakened. It's preoccupied with other things and it cannot fight the cold or the flu quickly enough. And for us, we had a lot of sugar over Christmas and then no sleep when we were traveling. Um, and then we all just picked up something. Um, so my, my immune system was definitely weakened at that point. But um, I'm just gonna open this up for a sec. Let's see, I just saw a couple comments. If my head is only half visible, you have to open up your, uh, maximize the screen. Um, YouTube will only have it half visible unless you make it full screen. 
Um, neem as an antifungal. <coughs> It's pretty good. It's more, I use it more as an antiviral. Um, just reading through some of these. Do you have any suggestions where to look? They keep giving credit. Okay, I'm only answering questions in, re in regards to this video. Um, what's the only thing? I went keto for a year. After a year. Okay, so uh, keto for a year is not good. There's no way your liver could ever handle that much fat um, for a full year. So keto is not a diet that should be done long term. Um, I usually say do keto about, uh, you know, like a month on. And then you can go to carb cycling where you do, you know, high fat and more protein and then more carbs, kind of like a cycle. But don't do keto uh, for a year. So that could be the issue there is your liver needs a lot more help. Um, but kind of going back to this topic here, um, now that I've collected myself a bit, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, inflammation can come from many places. We want inflammation. So I've seen people who have the most perfect life, like they're, everything is clean. There's not one thing that could possibly improve as far as their health and their, and their you know, products and their home and all that go. But they're still on anti-inflammatories. They're taking all the turmeric and doing everything they can to keep inflammation down. That can be a problem because... You do need inflammation to, to heal things in the body and to fight things. And if you're reducing inflammation too much, that's also a problem. So you don't want to, you know, kind of do like this overkill where you're getting rid of all the inflammation because you, you need it in the body. Um, the problem is just when your immune system is just too, you know, occupied with everything else. So when you, when you think of inflammation, I want you guys to think about this. Um, not this beautiful drawing itself, but those little fires all over the body that your immune system has to put out. And when um, you are looking and thinking about this, um, just think about, like I said, what areas in your life you can help your immune system to not have to put out so many fires. Try to not cut yourself. It's huge. It's little things, like honestly, that people don't think about. Um, children are are the most susceptible because they're always getting themselves hurt, and so they're they get sick more even than adults because their immune system is always like dealing with this kind of stuff. So um, watch, yeah, those areas in your life where you can you can actually control. Watch your stress levels. Um, you also want to watch your um, processed food. You can have it. Like I eat it a lot sometimes, and too much sometimes when I'm really busy. Um, but then I will go make sure I go through days where there's nothing processed because if your immune system doesn't recognize something, it's going to create inflammation. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with is looking at this diagram here. So if you're looking at the digestive system, <laughs> um, <laughs> such a sketchy drawing, sorry. Um, hopefully it gives you a good picture. So this, this digestive system is the biggest. So you cannot just, like you could be eating healthy food and still have inflammation there. So say you're sensitive to salmon, say that's your, your food sensitivity and you eat salmon and now your immune system, you know, doesn't like it. It's, it says, let's get rid of it. And it comes here and creates this inflammation. And then you go and have salmon tomorrow and the day after and the day after, or, you know, a couple times a week or a couple times a month this doesn't go down this is going to be constantly inflamed and when you have ibs ibd anything to do with like crohn's ulcerative colitis when you have a ton of inflammation in the colon you have to be so careful with what you're putting there because there's already so much inflammation the more you get the worse your condition is going to be usually for people with ibs ibs is there because of the inflammation in the colon and it's usually from toxic foods mainly sugar and dairy and gluten as well but not all people have an issue with gluten. It's actually usually dairy and sugar that are <coughs> two more um, like bigger issues. So um, keep that in mind if you have IBS, just start there. Start pulling things out of your diet that would cause inflammation in your colon because that's where your, your, your issue is. Um, but be careful with food sensitivities because you can be eating really clean, but you could still have inflammation. And so if you have bloating or say you eat really healthy but you're still itching in your skin or there's still a symptom or sign that there's inflammation just look at your diet because your your 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is here and that's where you're going to have the biggest reaction so make sure you're cutting things out of your diet that you're sensitive to at least for six weeks let the inflammation calm down before reintroducing those foods 
um, you don't need to do an IgG test. You can listen to your body and just say you eat strawberries and you start itching, then just cut strawberries out. Um, you know, eggs, your, your main, main inflammatory foods, but hopefully this helps, guys. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I haven't done a video because I was on vacation, so I wanted to come on and talk about this specific topic because it's something that I get questions about all the time. I'm sorry I was so sick. Um, my next video will be better, I promise. Um, but I wanted to do a live so I could show you this diagram um, and just explain how the immune system works. What you really want is to have none of this red or orange and just have one little line here or one little bit there where your immune system is just targeting one thing at a time and then there's no inflammation. Your immune system relaxes until you then cut your leg again or get a cold or a flu and then it, you'll have a little, you know, red here or there or somewhere and then it's gone and that's how it should be, not just, you know, little fires all over the body all the time. I hope this helped, guys. Um, let's see. Um, just looking at the questions. Do, 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 do. Can diabetes type 1 be reversed? Okay. Um, how should our omega-3 to 6 ratio be? I like a 2 to 1, so 2 omega-3 to 1 omega-6, but it depends on your on your health. If you're really healthy, you could do a 1 to 1. You could do a 2 omega-6 to a 1 omega-3. really depends. Um, but if you're inflamed, I would say a 2 to 1 of omega-3 to 6. Oh, absolutely. Inflammation can raise blood pressure. Um, oh, I think I'm stalling. Okay, um, I think I stalled, I'm not sure. Um, my six-year-old has inflammation. Did I stall, guys? My screen looks a little bit stalled. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm frozen. Okay, I think I'm better. I think this is better. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, my six-year-old has inflammation in his body uh, and was diagnosed with arthritis. Um, I don't really, like, give advice for kids, any, at least anymore, um, just because of, like, YouTube's rules and stuff like that. I have to be careful. But if your child has inflammation, you have to look at why. And anything to do with joints and bones is from being too acidic, so you need to alkalize. If you're acidic, your body will pull minerals out of your bones and joints to realkalize the body. So keep that in mind. Um, a high fat diet can be problematic if you have a lot. Yeah, absolutely. 100% um, you don't want to do like keto if you have liver issues because at least especially long term because it definitely strains the liver. Um, so don't overdo it. Everything, in my opinion, everything should just be balanced and in moderation. I don't like extremes. I did do keto. Um, and it helped me, but I only did it for one month and that was it. Um, nothing should be done in extreme or long term. You should not be on a specific diet long term. You just should eat normal, just eating clean and whole foods. Okay, awesome guys. All right, so I'm going to sign off. Um, and, oh, how to quiet inflammation. Okay, that I guess I could, I could answer because that might help everyone. Um, I've done a lot of videos on inflammation. I have tons. So if you're interested, search Happy Holistic Life and Inflammation. Um, but for now, the biggest thing is to cut things out that are causing inflammation. If something is stressing you out, cut it out. If something is you're eating is causing inflammation, cut it out. Um, if you are always hurting your body, whether it's, I don't know, your profession or you're always around knives, if you're a chef, something where you're constantly cutting yourself, just try to be more careful. Um, just try to limit the inflammation that your body has to produce. And then as far as supplement wise goes, I really like TH1, TH2 regulators. Then I have a video on that. Search Happy Holistic Life TH1. The video will come up and that explains exactly what to do. Um, it's just too much to go into this video. But your natural anti-inflammatories are your cod liver oils, my top. Um, Turmeric or curcumin is great if you have it with black pepper. Ginger is fantastic. Probiotics. Those are probably my top choices for uh, inflammation. So. Thank you guys so much for joining this live. Um, I will be doing some more videos very soon and I have um, another like meal prep video coming out to YouTube soon as well. So just stay tuned for everything. But thank you guys so much for joining again. Sorry it was all over the place, but I just wanted to come and say, hey, I missed everyone. So we will chat soon. Follow me on Instagram if you're not to just get more updates and we'll chat soon. Bye.